Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Barely Necessities, LaughingPlace.com's Disney merchandise show. I'm the co-founder of Laughing Place, Rebecca Mosley, and with me, as always, is Rebecca Burbank, our site manager. Hey, Becca, how's the week been? It's been pretty good. Uh, today, the Run Disney Wine and Dine Half Marathon weekend went on sale, and I am very grateful because I was able to get my two-course challenge, so... Today's an awesome day. Oh, that's wonderful. My friend Anita was also successful in booking the races that she wanted. So there's been a lot of uh, rejoicing at the return of uh, Run Disney in uh, in my world. So I'm, I hope that everyone else out there who was trying to book a Run Disney event was successful in capturing what they, what they uh, wanted to compete in. So yeah. very cool. That's in November. I still can't believe it's actually going to happen. I know. I'm very, very excited. This will be, last year I did the virtual Star Wars half marathon, but I will have done a Run Disney race every year since uh, 2012. So wow. I'm like, okay, got to keep, got to keep this momentum going. <laughs> well, with uh, the first, uh, topic of discussion here, we're actually going to showcase our adorable, uh, plush pals, uh, kind of getting active themselves, huh? <laughs> yes, they are. We have two new Disney New Emo collections, uh, clothing collections that arrived on Shop Disney this week. And there's an outdoor sports or summer sports and a university collection and that lounge fly backpack. How cute is that? <laughs> so, yeah, just a lot of kind of summertime fun um, outfits along with some accessories and items that reflect maybe like for me, this one says uh, more of fall back to school, uh, the cable knit sweater, corduroy mm -hmm. overalls this uh summertime so lots of fun i agree uh jeffrey i think the laptop's really sweet i know <laughs> and it's even got it's even got the, like the little mickey icon on it so really really adorable jeffrey did some ornament shopping we'll be talking about ornaments later so stick around jeffrey you um know, who has that business suit i think he and piglet looks like i think venture capitalist piglet so you get that with the laptop and you can kind of have a whole like business theme going too so yeah so those are over at uh shop disney uh new emo outfits and at the magic kingdom our uh roving reporter spotted a new item yeah i i didn't see this until we'd actually posted it and i was like oh my goodness that I think it's actually really cute. I don't know that I would wear it um, very much, but I do think it's really cute. Um, I have to I have to admit this is not my favorite of the Disney shop like dress shop collection okay. that's that's popped up there. I I like the idea, but I I don't know there's just certain elements of this design that really kind of catch my eye in um not pleasant ways like the pinstripes in the front okay. and just certain things like that but I, but I love the idea I'm, I, I'm I'm kind of wondering if maybe for me I would I it would play better perhaps as a like an apron as okay. opposed to the the full dress design but but I'm excited that they're branching out into even more niche areas for this dress shop design because I mean this is a corner fast food joint in the magic right? kingdom right you know? <laughs> so, so. and you're also like baseball too which right? i mean i know a lot of people like baseball but it's yeah it traditionally i guess what the women's baseball teams were like um the what's that movie i can't even think of oh well, a league of their own, own. So yeah there you kind of can can mash those two up yeah, so that's I I was just I'm, I guess that's what I'm ultimately pleased to see is just kind of that they're that they're not shying away from incredibly targeted, very small kind of niche categories uh, within the Disney realm uh, with with their fashion designs over at Dooney and Burke. Uh, mm -hmm. They have a new uh, pattern that hit Disney Springs yesterday celebrating Manhattan, that beautiful island town. Uh, yeah, Statue of Liberty, taxi cab, pretzels, hot dog cart, pretty yeah. much anything when I think the Big Apple, NYC, they've uh, incorporated into these designs. They've got Lady Liberty, of course, and then Liberty's Crown. Um, hopefully, 
both the the this collection and the Casey's um the Casey Cor- Casey's Corner dress will make their way to shop Disney. Usually they do, but I know that Disney likes to kind of test things out <laughs> like and, in, and I in wonder- resorts. And I wonder if this is a design that we might see, or maybe it, it in the article I overlooked um, its arrival at uh, the Disney store there on Fifth Avenue. This feels, you know, ripe for um, that kind of uh, storefront location right there on Times Square. Mm-hmm. I think that's where it is, right? I'm saying that the Times Square Disney I, store. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah, that's where it is. I've been there, but it's been such a long time. Oh, you know what? I think I I hit the button wrong. There it is, by the okay. way. Yeah. Sorry <laughs> if I didn't hit that better earlier. Uh, so there we have the uh, Mickey and Minnie on the park bench along with La- Lady Liberty and everything. So, so you've got those designs on that Junie bag and uh, all the information is on the article posted at Laughing Place. Um, also, uh, this week we've highlighted um, a collection of ornaments, Becca. Yes, on you can download the ornament collection guide on Shop Disney right now. It's 14 pages of the upcoming Disney sketchbook ornaments that will be available later this year. I don't have a date for when they'll be released, but if they're showing this to us now, we know it's going to be coming soon, probably in the next week or so, I would guess, because you want to start shopping for Christmas. <laughs> uh, they don't- just have so many, so many pretty ornaments. And they have varying features to them. For example, the um, Haunted Mansion uh, Hitchhiking Ghost, that's a glow in the dark uh, ornament. The uh, Cheshire Cat has some uh, uh, light up elements to, you know, aug- augment his, his face. Oh, Kidder, the Disney Store Times Square. Nice. Destination. I've been there only once, so. Or maybe twice. Now that I think about it, but I think only once. Um, over in in with the princesses, they have a number that include um, music. So you have the tangled uh, sequence with the uh, beautiful lanterns, and it has uh, music accompanying that. Uh, Ariel in her uh, washed ashore, uh, s- thrown together sail <laughs> dress, as I call it. Yeah. So. Various elements and moments from uh, the Disney film. Some of these poses are a bit familiar from previous years, but they, in some cases they've added like an additional uh, feature to it. Like at this time it'll play music and others are, are uh, totally new scenes. Mm-hmm. I really like the, I, I really like the Star Wars uh, selection this year. I know right now they're only showing us three. Hopefully there'll be more, but I, I think they look, really really great no, nothing says holiday time like luke hanging from a wampa cave with the uh, carnivorous beast approaching in the shadows behind him we always had a few <laughs> ornaments that were like very much the nerdy ones the one that you actually wanted not the not the one that mom and dad are like this is what should go on the tree it was like no i want i want this i'm quite certain that Luke Skywalker there hanging upside down would have been in in one of my, my collections or my siblings collections. Another example of these types of ornaments uh, is the uh, infinity gauntlet. Mm-hmm. I was like that seems to be a little intimidating I know. to uh, hang from the tree <laughs> but the Groot all wrapped up in uh, Christmas lights is very very adorable. Yeah I think so too kind of balances it's like a yin and yang image here right right <laughs> yeah did you did you hear our discussion yesterday on disney parks talk live we were uh debating virtual cues and various oh. ways to deal with cues and um the team decided that in order to fully embrace the marvel universe avengers campus should have worked in the snap so you get in the queue and then at some point, the app just tells you that you've been snapped, and you just have to vacate the queue, and just that's just you know part Better of your part of your time. experience. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, you get to go to another part of the park with everybody who's been snapped. Yeah, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, there you go. Yep. Yeah. So you know, you thought you're going to ride web slingers, but haha. No, <laughs> you can go eat shawarma instead. <laughs> uh, Jeffrey, the Hallmark pre-release this weekend. 
Uh, it happened with their ornaments and the rest will come in October. The highlight for uh, Jeffrey was the storyteller's ornament. It is really gorgeous. It is um, only eight, 18, it's priced at $18. Uh, it stands almost five inches tall. I uh, was actually talking about this with my friend Anita, which is why it's here. And I didn't have a chance to tell uh, Warren Becca that I had, I had uh, it's discovered fine. this. <laughs> but uh, this is over at um, Hallmark. The other, another of the items that uh, really caught my eye that were part of this uh, Hallmark pre-release was this uh, carousel featuring the Disney princesses. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's uh, beautifully illuminated and um, the way that uh, it works is it has little gemstones at the base of the carousel and depending on which color gemstone you select you'll hear a tune for that particular princess so it has part of your world or um, uh, for a uh, dream is a wish your heart makes or whatnot De and so depending on which one you uh, pick you get to hear your princess's anthem, I'll say, for lack of a better descriptor. Okay, now I want that. <laughs> right? And this is actually a tabletop piece. So it's a, it's a, it's a little over 11 inches tall. Uh, you, you would, uh, you know, have it sitting on your uh, table to uh, decorate the uh, area. Oh, hey, Jeffrey got to see it in person. Oh, it's loud. Okay. Yeah. Well, good. Then you can, you can. <laughs> Maybe that can be like, everybody needs to quiet down. We're listening to the princess. This right. <laughs> right. If the song comes on, then it's your turn to be quiet. <laughs> so we'll be sure to bring you more of those um, Hallmark keepsake ornaments um, as they appear as well. So shop, be, be paying attention to Shop Disney. We aren't sure when those will um, hit hit that website yet. And uh, all already some of the uh, holiday ornaments for 2021 are beginning to make their appearance at your local Hallmark. I know in our case, um, we're still able to do the uh, buy it and pick it up option as well um, as they continue to uh, account for some people not yet ready to uh, venture to the mall for, for you know, uh, long periods of time. <sighs> Over in Chicago, there's an auction house, uh, Potter and Potter, and uh, they on the end of this month they are showcasing an enormous collection of Disney uh, memorabilia and items, and it's a wide variety of stuff, which is why it caught my eye, because not only do you have these large ticket items uh, like a uh, towed ride vehicle, or uh, a piece of awning from the uh, Walt Disney World Railroad. Hey, look, there's Doobie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> props from the attraction. Uh, you, uh, costumes, cast member costumes. But then they also have smaller items that were made available at various of the Haunted Mansion events um, over the years. Some of these pop up in lots on the website. Other of these are made available independently. So there's a really a wide array of uh, pricing regarding the uh, types of merchandise being made available at the Potter and Potter auction. Uh, one of the items, uh, well, I'll, I'll highlight a couple of the lots that I thought that were kind of different, if that's okay, Becca. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's this VIP basket that was given to Imagineer and legend uh, Harriet Burns. This is from the 999 Happy Haunts uh, event, and uh, it contains a lot of the merchandise that was uh, sold at that event, but for their VIP guests, they presented them with this lovely gift basket and uh, Harriet's has uh, stayed intact and then presented to this auction house for bidding. Among the items in this basket is a piece that apparently due to a uh, production quality assessment on it, they ended up pulling it from the event itself. So the only way that people do have access to this item has been through finding VIP baskets like this or, you know, other, other uh, maybe, uh, like a artist proof or that, you know, that kind of thing as because they did uh, not make it generally available. And as Jeffrey says, uh, the uh, bids and estimates aren't horrible when you compare them to some of the other auction houses we've seen over the years. So right now the bidding is uh, 
the absentee bidding has opened, um, but the event itself will be um, at the end of July. Uh, there was this collection for the opening of Indiana Jones, a, a number of t-shirts, uh, lithographs, pins, and varying items that were made available to cast or to Imagineers, some maybe to the general public or media uh, around this time. But the, once again, these are items that weren't necessarily just kind of on the shelves at uh, the Emporium for you to purchase at the time of uh, Indiana Jones opening. This maquette uh, apparently was used in a pitch meeting regarding Figment. Uh, the bio for these items is available on the Potter and Potter auction website, which is uh, linked in the article. And you can see all the items there lot by lot. You can go through um, and you can see the what the uh, minimum bid is, uh, what the estimates are, how many bids have already been placed at this time. So it's a really fascinating, even if you're not necessarily um, looking to uh, add to the items on your shelf right now, it is a fun trip down memory lane. I'm sorry, but for me, it was a lot of fun to see things like that. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not like, and I'm not even as familiar with this stuff as I probably should be, but it is, it is pretty incredible that, that you can, you know, buy these i mean like you know you're bidding for them but that you you could potentially own some of this history disney history and if you're a really creative person you can find real fun ways to display some of this stuff i mean these are the little reflective pieces that were on the epcot wand Aww. right and so they have a lot here that they've gathered up a few of them and, and they're they're making those available and you know it's, it's just something from the park it's different and unusual Kind of, kind of fun. So that's over at the uh, Potter and Potter auction uh, auctions, and that'll be uh, July thirtieth. And I see a typo in the opening paragraph of the article. I'm going to have to deal with later so that I hadn't noticed you do before. That? I I noticed a typo in something that's been up for the weekend, but I did, and I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> that's 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 that, that, so, that's what just happened to me. So there you go. So yeah. <laughs> Um, in the world of Marvel, a new Lego set has popped up on the scene, Becca. Yes, we did talk about this over on Marvel Time last week, but I want to highlight it here too. This is Bro Thor and his new Asgard um, like apartment or his home. And so there's there's Bro Thor hanging out with Korg and, and Meek, and they're just having a good time gaming and eating pizza and dealing with, you know, half of the population and half of the universe snapped, but they're, they're <laughs> what, finding ways to, to stay entertained. What a, what a fascinating uh, choice for a Lego set. Just kind of, you know, a dude's place. Right? It's not like at the top of his game. I know. <laughs> So, but it's like so relatable. We've all had those moments where we're like not at the top of our game. And uh, I was I was telling um, Benji and Mike or Mac last week that I think it's funny. This is ages seven and up, but you can bet that everybody buying this set is probably going to be like twenty one and older. Like nobody, it's going to be adults who have this more than kids, at least in my mind. I feel like this is just. COVID, the Lego set. <laughs> That's true, too. <laughs> because I feel like this is kind of what, what was going on with just about everybody I knew. <laughs> yeah. For, a, for some por at least some portion of of uh, the past uh, year, we found, we found ourselves with more takeout in the house than we ever thought we'd have, and a few extra pounds uh, yeah. around the waist. So, <laughs> so there you have it. <laughs> and I agree, Valerie. This is kind of awesome. Mm-hmm. So this is $29.99. It's pre-order right now, but they're shipping in August. So there you go. If you need if you need bro Thor in your life, Lego's got you covered. Oh, uh, and continuing with Marvel, here's some Funko Pops. Oh no, these are yeah, yep. Funko Pops. That's right. So this is part of the last week they um Disney Plus gave us the Marvel's What If trailer and then they released these pops as well so this is kind of a spin on the mcu like what would have happened if 
uh, Peggy Carter had the super soldier serum instead of Steve Rogers. And so she's Captain Carter, as we can see there. Uh, and okay. We've got T'Challa as Star-Lord. So he joins the Guardians of the Galaxy. And I'm not quite sure what the Doctor Strange Supreme is supposed to be. But yeah, it's going to be an interesting series, I think. And then also there's more collectibles. So um, <laughs> As several of these are available now at various retailers. And then there'll also be some that are exclusive to um, like Amazon and to GameStop. So those several of those went up for pre-sale and they're gone already, but wow. more will be coming. Uh, as someone who doesn't uh, dive as deeply into Marvel as you, I am going to say that the Doctor Strange is if he went to the Cave of Wonders and decided to wear the carpet as a cape. I, I like that. <laughs> that's That sounds like that's then we're crossing over into other properties. That Thank works you. for me. Thank what if? <laughs> what if Doctor Strange discovered the Cave of the Wonders? wonders. <laughs> yeah. So, because that's what I thought of. Okay. Oh, Valerie's son is very excited for the what if. Well, if he's excited about the what if, maybe, just maybe, what entertainment Earth has on the horizon will catch us fancy too. Yes. These came to, out today. These are two pin sets. They're exclusive to Entertainment Earth and they're for pre-order right now. We've got one with Miss Minutes and the TVA uh, logo, and then Alligator Loki and a Loki for President button. So, I mean, how fun are these, right? Man, okay, I feel like I really need to watch this. There's a gator somehow in this Loki series. Okay. Oh, have you not watched the I I gave up episodes? after I, I gave up after the second episode, but I've been told that it's a bingeable show. Yes. And so I'm going to download it to my phone to watch on the airplane because I'm getting ready to head off to Florida. And uh, so I'm like, OK, I will I will watch Loki from coast to coast. I, I think maybe that's that's the way for me to do it. So I think that's a good approach. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so we'll give it a try. And then next week I will know and understand the uh, sure. Alligator, what, Loki. alligator Loki, right? Well, even even yeah. Loki himself was like, I'm not that surprised that there's an alligator here. And they're like, he's a Loki variant. So, <laughs> yep. Okie dokie. Oh, wow. Okay. You know, that makes me, uh, give me just a moment because we tweeted something that I should have had ready to go for today's broadcast now that we're talking about Loki. Let me see. Hopefully we didn't have too too many gazillions of tweets and I'll be able to find it fairly, <laughs> fairly quickly. Yes, I did. Oh, and then it went away. Shame on oh, it. No. Okay. It's okay. I know what hour it was. I'm going to pull it up so I can show everybody what was fueling some of the LP staff today. And that would be the yes. Loki charms. Apparently their breakfast was burdened with glorious, perfect yeah, uh, purpose, and they're mischievously delicious. I did see that. I forgot about that. Uh, yeah, somebody, somebody was lucky enough to get Loki charms. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not even sure who on our team uh, posted posted that, but uh, Loki Charms, the mischievously delicious cereal. So mm -hmm. if you haven't picked up your box, be sure to be on the lookout. <laughs> yes, much awesomeness, Mallory. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, if you enjoy a little bit of pop culture with your uh, shower time, may we suggest Dr. Squatch and the new uh, light side, dark side soap set. Mm -hmm. That's right. This is brand new. It uh, launched uh, just on Sunday, I believe. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not totally sure how this works, but I guess you can get a subscription with them and they'll send you products on a, you know, whatever basis every month or however many weeks that you want to you want to do that. But yeah, we've got some Star Wars uh, scents, I guess, and uh, theming here. And with the with the light side items, the Only Hope soap and the Wisdom Wash, these are more moisturizing um, soaps. They're uh, uh, gentle. They uh, have things like clay in them and, and this type of thing. Whereas the 
dark side scrub and the ruthless rinse. These have grit in the bar so that you can exfoliate as you uh, use those particular items. So, you know, a little bit more aggressive, I guess you, you would say, but, but both helping to uh, improve the beauty and luster of your skin as you uh, shower. And these are from the uh, Dr. Swatch. I believe this set is $32, yes. so about $8, $8 a bar. Um, I think my favorite is the Only Hope Soap uh, and by name. I, I yeah. think that's a cl clever name. The soaps themselves have a lot of beautiful coloring to them, by the way. Yeah. Uh, you can see the like the uh, blues and, and browns of the Only Hope and uh, the un unsurprising green with the right. wisdom wisdom wash. So, you know, ad ador adorable uh, soaps. They're way too manly for my husband who prefers uh, vanilla bean, cotton candy, and uh, these types of fragrances. It, these would be more apt to be my, I, I'm the one who buys like the musky, musky shower gels. He, buy, he buys all the, the uh, softer candy and dessert oriented uh, fragrances. You, know, you, you bring that balance. So, right? You know? <laughs> yep. Pretty much. Um, uh, for those of you who collect Star Wars, Hasbro Pulse, mm -hmm. uh, some new items are are coming there. We've got the uh, Cantina playset. Uh, we've uh, with uh, Luke. Um, no, that's Obi Wan. No, Kenobi. it's okay. <laughs> with, I know. Oh. I was. I didn't. I. D I know Obi Wan. I did not know that that these. I didn't know these names. I'm sorry. Yes, take away my Star Wars fan card. Um, but yeah, I think the one is Panda uh, Baba. Am I saying wow, that right? nicely done. Is that right? <laughs> and it's as close as I would have gotten. So yes, I think it's right. I'm going to call you right. See, Panda Baba, Dr. Evazon, and uh, Obi-Wan. These are six inch scale. Uh, we talked about these on Star Wars head. Well, on Omega Monday Star Wars headlines, uh, Mike Celestino is very excited about uh, the arrival of the Cantina Showdown. I am very excited about the arrival of Trapper Wolf. This is the character that was portrayed by uh, Star Wars' very own Dave Filoni. Uh, my disappointment is that it did not contain the astromech droid that sat behind him on the X-Wing because it is my personal obsession to know the biography of the astromech droid that uh, we saw in on his X-Wing in the Mandalorian. So I was kind of hoping I would get the answer to that. I was hoping they would have a um, swappable head with the cowboy hat. I mean, oh, wouldn't that be like course. just be perfect? Because you know between, between <laughs> shots, he would have taken the helmet off and he'd be wearing the... <laughs> Cowboy hat. That would have been so good. <laughs> I know. Then we're crossing, you know, into reality yeah, just, with Star Wars. But just wait. That'll that'll be out. That'll be out there on uh, Etsy somewhere for sure. Yeah. So <laughs> I have to imagine. Um, let's see. And then uh, finally, in the three and uh, three quarter size, is the Emperor's Throne Room. This set features a uh, Palpatine. Mm -hmm. uh, either with lightning hands or uh, his uh, walking stick. Meanwhile, the men in my life are uh, right. Ray Ritz. They're coming up with new soap names. Uh, Jeffrey apparently wants Leia Lather. So, you know, we'll, we'll, see, if, we'll see if they continue to, uh, to bring us new. Uh, we get a Padme polish or something. Oh, there you go. OK, OK, it's working. So yeah, so this is uh, coming uh, Hasbro Pulse, and the details are in the write-up that we did here mm -hmm. at Laughing Place. I guess that now brings us to the part of the show where I get to highlight 
the oh well let me double check with becca first becca did i skip over anything i did think I, we yeah. got i think we got everything today okay. was a lot <laughs> yep it was and i'm i'm on very little sleep my water heater exploded this weekend and oh, so no. it's been a a, a a little busier than usual around here everything's fine very little got damaged but it just required a lot of cleanup peppermint palpatine ooh, ooh. sounds magically <laughs> That's be, that'll be for the holiday ones. Uh, so this is the part of the show where I make a ridiculous list of seven items focused around the seven dwarfs. I call it this. And it is. It's time for the sensational seven. And before we are back with you, Disneyland will have another birthday. And so I thought, oh, collect a few items in celebration of that. My list for the Sensational Seven focuses on the dwarfs. That would be Sleepy, Happy, Grumpy, Dopey, Sneezy, Bashful, and Doc. And to start off, we've got Sleepy. I like to go with something a little cozy and warm. And so in this case, I selected this Ombre Disneyland sweatshirt. Simple, just Disneyland in a variety of blue shades. Mm -hmm. Somewhat dreamy. So I, I went with that. I like that. Yeah, dreamy. Yeah. For happy, we all laugh as we enjoy the Jungle Cruise. The greatest jokes, best dad jokes. It's a lot of fun. It's it's a early attraction, very much part of when you think of a trip to Disneyland, you think of the Jungle Cruise. Um, and uh, this particular version is based on the uh, theme park attraction. And so... I put this on the list for happy. Grumpy, eh, just a grumpy sweatshirt, zip hoodie, Snow White being an opening day attraction at Disneyland. So we've got grumpy with the mine cars. It felt, you know, that's part of what you would have seen in that opening day attraction. With Dopey, I try and highlight something that I really don't understand its purpose, and yet I feel I must have it. And that continues to be the Mickey Mouse earband. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I don't understand the Mickey Mouse earband. My friends have dozens of them. I still own none. How about you, Becca? Really? Confession you don't have time. any? Nope. Oh, I have, no. um, I have, well, I have a sparkly mini ears with the, with the red bow, of course, just classic black and the red bow. And then I have Oswald ears that we got, I think, in Disneyland Paris as part of their fan days. So I love those. And then at home, my very, very first pair of ears was these hard plastic, again, classic black with a polka dot bow. Um, oh. It was painful to wear, but I really like them. So yeah, I don't have, I, I have, yeah, not very many at all, but I can't I, believe I, you don't I have do any. The I do the traditional, you know, ear cap, you know, the okay. cap with the ears. I do but, have one of those too. But I have, I have yet to do the headband in spite of the fact that my dearest friend, Anita, you open up a, the drawer. She has like a drawer, a special ear hat drawer. And it's like, just, there's like dozens and dozens and dozens of them. And they're all beautiful. I mean, don't like, especially like these, look at these. These are gorgeous. Yes. You've got the Disneyland D. You've got the 2021, so what year it is. You've got a, the uh, outline of Sleeping Beauty Castle, a bright and vibrant Mickey Mouse, you know, and a, a, a color palette that's easy to, you know, match with whatever, you know, you've got going on that day because it's su super vibrant. But yeah, for whatever reason, I have I have yet to, I came very close with a pair that were at Olani that I saw on oh, Shop really? Disney. It had a Plumeria, came very close, Ooh, but yeah. yeah, no, you didn't. You didn't no, it still hasn't happened. I, my, my, the one I regret because I finally saw it in person. And if it's at Florida, maybe it'll end up coming home with me. It's a blue with jewel tone in the ears. And so it, it's really, okay. it was really pretty. It sparkles beautifully. So yeah, so, so maybe. Uh, meanwhile, uh, on with the list. Uh, next up is Sneezy. Sneezy needs a place to uh, keep tissues. So I think of Sneezy as I, I try and get like a backpack or, or something like that. And in this case, uh, focusing on yet another opening uh, attraction and uh, Peter Pan. Aww. Here we have the beautiful clock face with uh, Peter, Wendy, and the boys uh, preparing to uh, set down on the hand. The back side of this has second star to the right and a beautiful uh, Tinkerbell uh, 
pixie dust on the back. So, you know, just a lovely little crossbody bag that's at Hot Topic. Bashful Dumbo, the flying elephant, affords you the opportunity oh. to ride alone or with one other person. So you don't have to be with a lot of other people. And this sweet, uh, precious moments piece uh, reminds us that we don't just fly, we soar. An adorable little uh, flight with Dumbo, the little hat on the head and the little plush Dumbo in hand. And finally, for Doc, I try and go something more classic. And in this case, the amazing Funko 65th Anniversary Castle. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is from last year, but it's been one of those items that comes and goes. As you see right here, it says restocking soon. So you've got band leader Mickey because, hey, that's how I remember seeing him often at uh, the Disneyland Resort, kind of out in front of the band as they would march down uh, Main Street. And uh, then... We have uh, the beautiful Sleeping Beauty Castle as well. So there you have it. That's my sensational seven as uh, we prepare for Disneyland's birthday on July 17th. I know. That's coming up so fast. <laughs> totally. Um, let's see. I guess that brings us to the all the items that we haven't been able to talk about. Mm -hmm. And this is the time when Becca tells you what maybe you should be adding to the shopping list. That's right. This past week, we had a Wishables Wednesday. And so it's the Incredicoaster. And you've got the uh, Parr family, the Incredibles. And then I think there's the Jack Jack is the standalone. So very, very cute if you're collecting those Wishables. Um, if you're into cosplay, there's the new Captain America backpack and pin set at Entertainment Earth. We've got a story about that. Um, we talked about Loki, of course. There's Kid Loki and President Loki variant Funko Pops that are available over at Entertainment Earth and I think on Amazon as well. Uh, we've got the Marvel Legends Hercules, which is not Disney's Hercules, but this character who was pretty popular in the 90s, and that's coming soon from Hasbro. And then more Marvel, of course. Uh, Jeremiah found some character pins at Walt Disney World, and there's Black Widow and Captain Marvel, Captain America, Hulk, Black Panther. So if you're collecting pins or want to trade pins even, if people are still doing that, there's plenty to check out at Walt Disney World. <laughs> And speaking of Jeremiah, he just shared on our, well, very recently shared on our Twitter, the arrival um, return of these delightful uh, Disney hand soap pumps. Uh, these are being spotted at World of Disney. They had previously been over in Japan. You can kind of see in the diagram here, it's kind of hard to tell, but what it, what makes these uh, particular hand pumps unique, they're selling for $10, is that when you pump it, the it p puts out a little like soapy uh, Mickey head on your hand that you can then, you know, use to uh, wash your hands. And so these have been in Tokyo for a long, long time. And we are very excited to see them making their way to the Disney parks and hopefully to shop Disney for those of us who don't uh, make it to the parks to buy. So, as, so there's lots going on between the shopping list that Becca just mentioned. I know that that now is about to be turned into some sort of write up on on laughing place as well. We've always got things uh, going on here. So I invite you to uh, subscribe to this stream to and uh, hit the bell to be notified whenever we go live. We'll be back again later tonight. My son and husband host Disney Trivia Live at 7.30 uh, p.m. I know that in the upcoming days, we're going to have a uh, broadcast coming to you from California Adventure, from Epcot, uh, from uh, various other uh, locations and parks. I know we have uh, Marvel uh, discussions that also will be happening later this week, along with a roundup of uh, uh, Disney TV programs. So like I say, lots going on here at Laughing Place. Becca keeps us all in line as our site manager. She keeps the machine uh, moving and uh, everything uh, going up and beautifully uh, designed and everything. Mm -hmm. So sometimes <laughs> uh, it's a busy, it's a busy time of year. It's been fun. Yes, it is. Yes. 
it's been a lot of fun. Okay, well, I guess that's it for us here at Barely Necessities. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we'll see you next time. Bye for now. Bye.